And first of all, we have a massive short from Ray Dalio shorting all of the Italian lenders saying the March the 4th elections will be very disruptive. What do you tell Mr. Dalio? Uh, uh, good morning, Francine. I, I think that uh, the Italian election would not represent or could not represent a real uh, problem or threat because on one end uh, we have uh, an electoral law that is a bit cumbersome because it has been uh, uh, drafted and introduced not to give a clear leadership uh, to a party, so uh, a coalition government is the likely outcome. But in positive is uh, that uh, all parties have a pro-Europe uh, program, and at the end, I think uh, the coalition uh, that can be made will be a coalition aligned uh, to the path uh, that has been followed uh, in terms of uh, uh, structural reform and adjustment uh, that have been followed by the last government that has been done uh, quite a good job in uh, fostering also the growth that we are seeing in Italy. It is quite robust. Um, uh, talk to me. So first of all, congratulations on you know giving back to some of uh, your shareholders. Uh, the guidelines seem pretty strong going forward for Mediomanca. Could you actually increase uh, the targets given the bank's trend, but also the improved outlook for the Italian economy? Yes, we are going uh, uh, in uh, in the right direction in the sense that in many many metrics we are. Uh, ahead of our plan in terms of gross operating profit, in terms of net earnings, in terms of capital generation. Uh, this reverted into higher than expected uh, uh, results. For this reason, we have revised the guidance uh, on uh, dividend uh, going towards 50 percent uh, payout. Revising other guidance, uh, I think it's uh, uh, too soon because the group, as you know, is growing fast also through acquisition. So we revising every operative guidance, uh, uh, every quarter uh, uh, half year's result uh, is, uh, I think, uh, not the right uh, way to look at through the group uh, performance. So it's better to stick on the remuneration uh, to shareholder that has been improved and may be further improved should the capital generation be even more robust than uh, the one that we are now for, uh, forecasting. So you're focusing on wealth management to boost revenue. What are your targets on this segment? The overall strategy is to reshape the group in a way that uh, the fee component of the group can be much higher. And within the, the fee component, uh, among revenues, uh, wealth management is going to be the main contributor. Today, we have reached 45 percent uh, com uh, contribution, but we do hope to go above this also through a selected acquisition, so that at the end, Medio Banca Group will have a fee uh, revenue that will come mainly from asset management and private banking. Um, Mr. Nagel, talk to me uh, once more about the payout. So you're basically, you want to focus on M&A, am I right? Or you're focusing on acquisitions after you already uh, bought Karen and Ram. But, but if you don't find anything to buy, does that mean that you'd increase payout? Yes, of course, uh, the, the, the plan of, of Mediobanca is a plan of uh, targeted to, to 2019. The bank, of course, will go much beyond that. So we should uh, look at M&A even beyond that date. And, uh, uh, you know, always take into consideration these two needs to continue to increase remuneration to shareholder and continue to grow. Mediobanca has been one of the few banks uh, in Europe uh, to grow its revenue about uh, two digits in the last three years and to grow by an average 27 percent uh, the gross operating profit in the last four years. This is led to a a mix of uh, organic growth and M&A. So we should continue on this trend. What are the countries that you're looking at? Are you reviewing anything at the moment for possible acquisitions? Uh, for wealth management, we are uh, reviewing uh, uh, target uh, mainly of distribution in Italy. And in terms of platform, we are reviewing uh, um, uh, professional house that can be uh, uh, become an affiliate like uh, the one that we did recently with RAM that was a quite uh, an interesting transaction that are mainly outside Italy and are exclusively in the, in the alternative uh, space in the liquid segment.
Um, give me a, a, a sense also of you're really the prominent investment bank in the Italian landscape. Um, what's your take on the capital markets for this year? What's your take on M&A? We have seen in the last two quarters uh, quite a robust pipeline uh, and a number of deals announced uh, where Mediobanca has taken a leadership role, both in M&A and uh, in capital market. We uh, think that this kind of trend will continue, in particular in M&A, because uh, cost of debt will stay uh, low. The amount of uh, liquidity and excess capital within many operators, uh, both in corporates, uh, but also in the future in banking uh, sector and also private equity is very abundant and hence uh, there is a lot of dry power that can be put at work uh, and, and so we will see a continuation of this trend of uh, deals, big one and mid-sized one and also transaction on uh, equity capital market and debt capital market that uh, are very open to this kind of uh, trend. Uh, Mr. Nagel, uh, one final question, then you'll have to come back on with me in London. Do you worry about this market volatility we saw this week? Sorry, can you repeat? I was asking you about the market volatility, the market correction. Do you worry about it? No, we are not worried uh, in the sense that we think that uh, this uh, um, indicator that uh, led to this correction uh, uh, over time uh, are, can be seen not as structural and uh, mm -hmm. um, quantitative is uh, and the absolute level of interest rate is still uh, is still low it is true that uh, credit spreads uh, have been very tight and hence uh, a possible threat can be a, a sudden increase of this credit spread this is the real risk